What's up, everybody? This is Fred Rachani of TSC News. I have right here on the line a very special guest. He is professional wrestling legend Double J Jeff Jarrett, who looks to take the wrestling world by storm with Global Force Wrestling. Jeff, how's it going? Wow, Fred, what an intro. I appreciate <laughs> you having me on and uh, looking forward to talking to him much. Global Force Wrestling, and, and more specifically, the uh, Grand Slam Tour that kicks off, uh, gosh, less than two weeks. Yeah, man, you, you got a busy summer and fall ahead of you, and I, I guess I'll just ask you first here. You, you, you did the TNA thing for over 10 years, you know, very successful with that company. People can say what they want. At the end of the day, it was a, it was a company that pro has provided a national worldwide platform for people to apply their craft, make a living. You, you left TNA. You've been in the business God knows how long. Why did you decide to start a brand new wrestling promotion as opposed to say, I don't know, enjoying the family life and just chilling at home? You know what? It's, it's in my blood. It's in my passion. Uh, you know, you said uh, I've been in the business only God knows how long. Well, <laughs> specifically, I'm in my 29th year of, wow. of, of actively being in the business. But my family's been in the business since back in the 1940s. And so my grandmother got the business and she didn't wrestle, but she did just about everything besides that. And, and, uh, and my dad followed in her footsteps and promoted, and then he wrestled, and then he went back to promote it. And so that's uh, what I did. I started out as a, as a teenager helping different things at shows, concession stands, setting up the ring, ticket taker, ushering, and all sorts of things like that. And then I you know, got in my active wrestling career, and, and then, as you stated, you know, launched and founded TNA back in 2002. And, and now here we are in 2015, and we're about to embark on a, a, a really cool, grassroots approach, uh, grassroots initiative to uh, spread the word in 2015 about Global Force Wrestling. Well, let's say you and I are stuck in an elevator, and, and I ask you to give me your pitch on Global Force Wrestling and how it's going to separate itself from WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, and other wrestling promotions. What would you tell me? And there's two things that probably jump off the page to me in, in that, you know, all brands nowadays, whether it's the television show The Voice or American Idol or sporting team, you know, social media uh, is such an enormous part of it. We're going to be engaged, uh, not not just daily, but almost hourly with our fan base in the professional wrestling world, where people will tell you what they like, more importantly, they probably tell you what they don't like, you know, and so we're going to uh, be engaged with our fan base, and, and, and that's going to be just part of it, because we want to put on a, a, a brand of professional wrestling that's hard-hitting, very competitive. Uh, and, and that, that you know, WWE, what they do, they do it better than anybody else. And they're sports entertainment. We're going to be professional wrestling. And, and, and the very essence of that is, is guys getting in the ring and competing. And I, when, when I mean that, I, everyone knows the world of professional wrestling that it, uh, you know, it's not just a sport. Uh, but we do compete. And we compete to have the best move, the best match, to be in the main events, to sell the most merchandise, to sell the most tickets, to get the biggest, best reaction. And so there's a real level of competition, and our guys are going to have a, 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 a strong passion for what they do. You know, if, if, if you're going to be a part of the Global Force Wrestling roster, you're going to have an incredible amount of passion to be the very best that you can be, not just once a week, but every time you step in the ring. Now, you are embarking on this summer tour with GFW. You, of course, have your first TV tapings on July 24th at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Can you give us any update on the TV situation? Because you do have three separate nights of TV taping scheduled. But at the moment, of course, we don't know where you guys are going to end up. Well, I, and, and I have, you know, today is day one, and I'm going to be doing media all this week, uh, talking about the Grand Slam Tour and talking about Gold Force Wrestling. There's some, there's some things that I'm, uh, quite frankly, going to hold close to the vest. Uh, but we're in, in, and this is what, you know, I, I think it was two interviews ago I did earlier this morning, is that, you know, we are in, in a unique set of circumstances uh, in, in um, not, not just in the wrestling business, but in, in, in uh, the world of television. Cable television, is, in my opinion, and we've got some industry insiders that couldn't agree more, it's been a real crossroads. And so to what we want to do is we're going to go out to Las Vegas and shoot real compelling content. And that's got to be a line, but not just, the United States, but globally as well, because we're, we're, we're in discussions with multiple global partners. You know, people are starting to cut the cord as more services such as Netflix and HBO now gain more prominence that uh, eventually the TV and the internet are just kind of going to be intertwined? 
they're already they, they, they truly already are. It's it, it, you know um, the, the, you know from the from the, the phones to the tablets to the desktops, the, the world is connected uh, via whether you want to say it internet, whether it's streaming, uh, Netflix and and, and, and and streaming services like that. Are, have been are being true game changers. Just look at the WWE Network is the perfect example if you want to look strictly inside of our industry. Uh, who would have thought two or three years ago that you would have had, you know, truly only one pay-per-view that, that is, you know, a, a true pay-per-view. All the others, it's, it's streaming. And Vince is getting nine ninety nine a month from his network subscribers. And so the world has already changed if people are – you know, and I say in mass are really starting to look at that, and that's that that plays a big, big component, not just in wrestling, in all of, and it's not just television, in all distribution methods. The game has changed. Now, with wrestling, I feel like, especially at least on the, in the WWE level, it's really just kind of evolved into more of a uh, TV product. Uh, do you think it's a, a problem that? There's not as much focus on, say, individual events like month-to-month pay-per-views or, or or once every quarter, and things are, are kind of sped up a little too fast. You know what? That's so subjective. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the, the, you know, it's 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 again, bottom line, we're in a business, so you got to become profitable. Uh, and this is not a sprint; it's a marathon. And so you sort of have to take everything together. And when you say it's become a TV show. Well, the TV show also drives live events, but live events drives merchandise. So it all sort of works hand in hand. And if you really get into the DNA of, 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 of entertainment, I'll, I'll say that, and that the music business has drastically changed, drastically changed. Ten years ago, it was about selling CDs of 10 to 12 songs. And then it went to, I'm going to sell one song on iTunes at 99 cents. And then it went to a streaming. And at the end of the day, their business model has changed, and it's gone back to touring where the money's at, touring and merchandise. So the world has changed, and the wrestling business is evolving. We're all evolving and adapting and sitting back and trying to figure out. And that's a big part of why I was really excited to get the, the minor league a Grand Slam tour off the ground, because that's, in essence, the, 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 the real building block of creating brand awareness. And that is, uh, and, and always has been, it, it, you know, WWE. They've been around 50 years. They are the industry standard. They are, you know, they are the Coca-Cola product. There is no Pepsi in our brand. There's a bunch of other soft drinks, and I say that I'll, I'll do respect because, you know, uh, two years ago there was no such thing as Lucha Underground. New Japan wasn't on Axis. Uh, Ring of Honor didn't have a cable deal. You know, just the world has changed. So now you're looking at TNA, uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan, Lucha Underground. That's four promotions right now that, that are, that are you know, thriving. And so, you know, Global Force, we're going to fit into that. Well, we're going to take it one step at a time and just to continue to create brand awareness. Well, what are the biggest lessons you learned in working with uh, TNA that you're going to apply to GFW? You know, that, that, again, that, 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 I don't say it's subjective, but it, it, it really depends on, what you what you mean by lessons and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, I, I guess like that, like what successes did you have? What what failures did you have? And how did you learn from them and applying them to GFW? As far as your your, your well, past experience, I'll, I'll, I'll say this first and foremost: the brand awareness is, is something that I'm very laser focused on, and that starts at a real grassroots approach. Uh, always has been, and I'll, again, I live here in Nashville, so I've got a lot of friends in the music business, and you know they take. Um, you can call them a bar act, you, you know, however you want to say it. They take an act and, and, and they, you know, that act becomes pretty big in one city and then they branch out to another couple of cities and they tour regionally. And then from regionally, they take them to a radio and it's a real building process. Well, professional wrestling is really no different in that you, you have to have a building block and you've got to go from A to B, B to C, and C to D. And so, uh, again, it's about creating that brand awareness of what the brand's about. And that's why we're so heavily engaged, uh, you know, on a local level uh, that, that we've gone into these cities and partnered with these minor league stadiums uh, and, and ball teams and, and, you know, began to create brand awareness with that. And then, you know, social media obviously is instantaneously around the world, and we're highly engaged on that as well. Now, there's a lot of excitement surrounding GFW and, of course, uh, Lucha Underground, which may be renewed for a second season by Univision, and Ring of Honor, which is set to debut on Destination America. 
it, it's kind of the opposite right now, unfortunately, with your former company in TNA, which is you know going through quite a bit right now. We don't know if they're still going to be on TV uh, by the end of September. Uh, just the, your thoughts on that whole situation, and what advice would you give some of the guys back there? Because obviously, it, it can't be a great time right now. Well, and, and the, 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 I guess the real reality of the situation is me and you uh, and, and many, many, many others don't really know the actual fact. Uh, although, uh, you know, is it rumor? Is it half rumor? Is it 100% truth? I don't know. Uh, if, if you're asking me for advice, I was in a situation in WCW when you heard rumors, you heard this, you heard that. And what I did back in 2000 or 2001 is, is I got up every morning and said, I'm going to be the best Jeff Jarrett can be today and do the very best I can for WCW today. And at the end of the day, when you do those two things, you make sure you're doing the best for the wrestling fan. And they're the ones who ultimately put food on your table. And so, uh, that, you know, if you're asking me for advice, that, that would be a part of advice. Uh, I can't comment on um, I, I can't comment on the other part of it because, quite frankly, I I don't know the facts. Gotcha. Any plans of wrestling? Oh, I, you know, I, as far as Global Force Wrestling, I've said it over and over and over. I do not. I am not a part of the Global Force Wrestling roster. Uh, am I saying I'm retiring? No, I'm not going to do one of those. Uh, 15 retirement tours, but but no, I am. Uh, you know, it was my first love. I've I've done it for over 29 years now. I, I'm very proud of the career that I had. Uh, but right now, all my energies are going toward promoting Global Force Wrestling. How's your body holding up these days? Good, good. You know, still still train uh, three or four days a week and get cardio done seven days a week. So I I, I feel like I'm and that keeps me uh, keeps my sanity, but also you, you got to stay healthy. Uh, to, keep, to keep your energy level up to do what you got to do. Now, I saw that Jim Cornette's scheduled for a few GFW shows. Is that just a, in an appearance town capacity, or could you see uh, Corny uh, finally leaving his sabbatical from professional wrestling and getting back in the swing of things? Well, it's, it's a step-by-step process. On Right now, he's scheduled for a couple of events, and on every Global Force Wrestling show, we're going to have a legend because... I know from just wearing a promoter's hat for many years is that, you know, wrestling fans want to come out. It's a three-generation form of entertainment. Grandmas and grandpas can take their grandkids and moms and dads. And, and so, you know, the grandma or grandpa or the mom or dad, they may remember the legend and be introduced to the new stars and stars of tomorrow. And, and, and the kids may have heard about these up-and-comers and mom and dad may not have heard about it. So we're going to have that mix. Uh, and as far as the relationship with me and Jim Fournette, uh, you know, we go back. His, his mother and my grandmother were best friends for many, many years. And so, you know, there's a long Cornette Jarrett relationship. Uh, my father was very instrumental in getting Jim into the business. Um, and so, but as far as Jim getting him in back, to, back into the business day to day for Global Force or anybody else, I don't foresee that happening, period. But I may be wrong. Jim Ross has said multiple times on his Ross Report podcast that. He firmly believes a lot of promotions such as Ring of Honor, TNA, Lucha Underground, and, and even you know, international promotions like AAA New Japan should all try to work together because there's strength in numbers. And at the end of the day, nobody's necessarily going to be uh, dough to be overnight or, or ever. Uh, it seems to me that Global Force is really open-minded as far as working with other companies such as uh, AAA and New Japan. Are you looking to form other relationships around the world? Now, I, I'll, I'll echo what you just said with, with, with what Jim said. WWE is, you know, arguably 90, 85, 95% market share in, in, in the world. And so I believe it's silly. I believe it's juvenile. I believe it doesn't make any sense not to work. And I'm not saying, uh, as quote unquote, you got to get in bed together and marry each other. You know, what I'm saying is have a loose working relationship. And when I can help another promotion or another promotion can help, it, it makes business sense because at the end of the day, it will create more brand awareness for all of the brands, whether it's Lucha Underground, whether it's New Japan, AAA, Ring of Honor, TNA, House of Hardcore, it's all of the different promotions out there. If I'm going to send a Global Force Wrestling talent to uh, this brand, it's only going to help Global Force. And, I, and hopefully it will help them, and vice versa. And so I think it makes a lot of sense in 2015 to have that mindset. There, there's a lot of excitement, too, from an unlikely place. Uh, the MMA audience, excited to hear that Chael Sonnen is joining GFW as a commentator. 
What's it like working with the bad guy thus far? Shale is 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 a, what a skill set, what a unique individual with an incredible passion, uh, not just for life but for professional wrestling, and and he knows his stuff. And so uh, he's told the story a couple of times, and we have it online and our YouTube channel at that GFW YouTube. It is that you know Shale, uh he pursued us. He talked to Jim Ross. He got my number, and then we had a healthy text exchange, and then multiple phone calls, and then. You know, we arrived at where we're at today, and I couldn't be more excited uh, because Chael, you know, he's an expert analyst for ESPN on MMA, the world that he uh, came from, but he also ha- has a uh, a lifelong passion for professional wrestling that goes back into the territory days of Don Owens in Portland, Oregon. Is there any chance that we could see him in the ring down the road? That's TBD. We have agreed that we will address things one at a time, and uh, right now, Jail is focusing on being the very best expert analyst he can be. Awesome. Well, Jeff, uh, I know you got a, a ton of other interviews to do. We really do appreciate the time. Uh, before we let you go, the floor is yours to tell us all about what's coming up with Global Force Wrestling. Go to GlobalForceWrestling.com. That has all the latest freaking news and information, anything and everything you want to know about all the live events, the Vegas tastings, and then our, our social media uh, 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 handles are at GFW Wrestling. It's at GFW Wrestling. So check us out on there. I appreciate the support. And, uh, again, uh, looking forward to speaking to you in the future uh, after we've got a couple of Grand Slams, Vegas tapings under our belt. Awesome. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it.